who have spent many years tracking and monitoring the BBC on the grounds of impartiality. And I wanted just to play you a little clip that I heard at five to nine this morning. And this was uh, Mehdi Hassan, former BBC employee. He worked here for The Guardian. He now works for MSNBC in America. And this is what he had to say about American politics. And then on the US, do you think that, because a lot of the time you're referring to is, I mean, you, you took on a lot of Trump supporters. I think yeah. that's what you're mostly referring to about the, yes. the, the battle for democracy. Is it, is it different now? Does it feel different in the Biden time? I wish I could say that is, but Donald Trump is running for office again, you know, just two years after he incited an armed insurrection at the Capitol. And uh, he's more extreme, more uh, insane and more anti-democratic than he was in 2020. And the next election is going to be over. isolated, isn't he? Do you, do you really think that he could become the candidate? What about Ron DeSantis? Uh, if you look at the polling, he's doubling Ron DeSantis' lead. He's, you know, this is a guy who will go scorched earth. He defeated 16 Republicans in 2016. He's already referred to DeSantis as a paedophile, which is a reminder of how Trump has no limits. Um, and I think DeSantis is deeply overrated, has a glass jaw. And I think, sadly, Trump is probably the favourite to be the GOP nominee again. And in a polarised country, he's tying with Biden in the the polls, which is remarkable. So there we are. That was the Today programme this morning. You know, you've got a journalist there accusing the immediate ex-president of being insane, um, of leading an armed ins insurrection. It's the first time I've heard it used in, in or described in those terms. Uh, and he's a threat to democracy. There's no counter from the BBC at all. Do you know, if I sat here, David, if I sat here, you know, with an American, uh, Republican, who came out with a string of, 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 of accusations against Biden like that, if I didn't balance and check it in some way, I mean, Ofcom, quite rightly in a way, given the legislation, would be on my back. But in your view, the Today programme's got a bit of a history of this. It, it certainly has. Um, I think the BBC these days inhabits its own bubble. It's called confirmation bias. And the trouble is that they... Confirmation um, bias, explain. Well, the people working within an organisation um, absorb the uh, values of the culture within which they inhabit. And unfortunately, the BBC has gradually, over the years, become much, much more, as you put so aptly put it, left-leaning. Mm. And they don't see it themselves. It's what they think the world is like. Yeah. And what Michelle, uh, what Michelle Hussain was doing there was not actually putting the count, as you say, not putting the count of you at all. It's because it doesn't occur to people like her that you should put the count of you because they think that is proven fact. I mean, David, you know, in the past, I was a campaigner for Britain to leave the EU uh, and, and you famously did a lot of work that led to the so-called Wilson Review, where they said on issues like Europe and immigration, they would act uh, with impartiality, admitting their mistakes of the past. And I thought maybe we'd achieve something of a breakthrough. I think the BBC now is worse than it ever was. Yes. And basically, I, I, I believe, and my organisation, Newswatch, yep. believes that uh, it's because the complaints process itself is, a, is, is not, uh, not up to standard. It's a joke, in fact. The BBC are still their own judge and jury. On matters of internal complaints, they look after the vast majority. In the past uh, year that there's figures, they have held only about 12 complaints through their ECU, which is a bit like the Star Chamber, internal. And um, they, they had something like 492,000 complaints in total. What we need, what the BBC Midterm Review needs to do, which is due to uh, report in May, the, the, the DCMS is dealing with that at the moment, is just to overhaul the complaint system and make it robustly and genuinely independent. I think if that happens, uh, although the rot has set in so much, it would be a very difficult turnaround, there would be a chance. OK, of... so maybe the BBC is not beyond hope. No, it, it, may, it may be possible. There are good journalists at the BBC. It, the, I, I come back to the point that the confirmation bias mm. is, and that, that is fed in, in, the, in the complaints area and their, their editorial standards area by the fact that they're not getting sufficiently robust outside views. So would strong government leadership make a difference here? It could well do, yes. Um, well, we could do with that. Yes. Uh, and what do we learn, David, from the Lineker saga of the last few days? What does it tell us? 
Well, be because the BBC are not serious about policing impartiality, they tie themselves in knots. And I think what happened with Tim Davy over the past few days is he got scared of the reaction. He thought that there was going to be a, a mass turn-off or something like and that. And yet the polling shows that nearly three-quarters of the country think Lineker was wrong to say what he said. They may not have thought he should lose his job over it, yes. but on the issue, saying that to try and stop illegal immigration and comparing the Home Secretary and Prime Minister to Goebbels and the gang, the vast majority of the country were in a different place. What was Davy scared of? I, I don't really know precisely. I mean, it, it's staggering, really, that a man of his experience is, is, is so at sea over this. But the, the point is that there are guidelines which say high-profile presenters, and they took a lot of... The BBC took a lot of trouble to introduce mm. these over the past few years. Uh, high-profile presenters should not engage in political issues in the way that Gary Lineker yeah. did. Yeah, overtly party political. Yes, yes. So May is a big moment, yeah? It, it is, yes, uh, and the build-up to May. And we're, we're, we, we've been challenging the BBC over many, many months and years yes. now, and gradually we're pushing towards... We're, we're, uh, we're doing a judicial. We've got permission to go for a judicial review of their, how they judge impartiality. We're challenging them on freedom of information matters, and I, I think they are rattled at the moment. They just don't know what to do.